All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And uh, we're gonna talk about diet with alligators today. And you know, a lot of people ask how often does he eat? You know, how much does he eat in one sitting? And uh, you know, we talked about this a little bit when people are asking like, do you feed him before you interact with him? And no, I do not. Uh, but then people assume like, oh, well, you know, they're kept well fed so they don't bite. You know, we did a whole video on that one too. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, you have videos online showing a huge overweight gator, doesn't eat any more food, guy goes to feed it, rips his hand right off and swallows it in front of his face. So we've already covered that before too. So what we didn't cover though is how often they eat. And so typically in captivity, we feed the alligators about once a week. And that's it, once a week. And a very relatively small amount of food. And in captivity, we're feeding these guys less in a year than like what a 30 pound dog would eat. Like it's really not very much food at all. And in the wild, he might eat once a month or once every couple of months, depending upon prey availability and weather and things like this. When I say weather, I mean like in the winter, if it gets really, really cold or if it dries down, that also happens here in South Florida, it doesn't get that cold, but, and it will dry down. And these guys might have to go into a state of estivation where there's not gonna be any prey and they just have to sit there in a mud wallow for months at a time and uh, or if they live up north in like North Carolina it's gonna get too cold they're not gonna be able to eat through the entire winter there it's just too cold they can't digest their food right and so the point being though that they don't produce their own body heat they are ectotherms and you're an endotherm and that's why it's so surprising for us because we think of things like us like other mammals, dogs and cats that eat every day. And so we think that they're gonna be the same, especially when it's a big animal, you know? So people just naturally assume that like, oh, it's a big animal, it must eat a lot more than I do. But they don't, because they don't produce their own body heat. And so that saves them on an immense amount of energy, not having to produce their own body heat. Instead, these guys thermoregulate with the environment, sitting out in the sun and basking, heating up like a solar panel out there. And then they're also, relatively sedentary most of the time. Most of the time, they're very calm. They spend most of the day just kind of hanging out and relaxing. That's not to say that they can't be quick when they want to or powerful when they want to. We obviously know these are very powerful animals and they want to be fast. They can be fast for sure. Um, but yeah, they don't have that same uh, energy output that like, let's say you do or a dog does. And so they don't have to eat as much on that front, but then really it's that thermoregulation part Oh, there's a branch just fell over there. Actually, people ask, you know, like he's gonna turn around and go check it out maybe. But um, when people ask, you know, what am I worried about when I'm in here? That's, I'm worried about hanging out with him and he's totally fine and then a branch falls and he just bam, turns and snaps at me, trying to grab the splash from the branch and ends up getting me or something like that's That's something I worry about when I'm in here. But, uh, but yeah, so anyways though, he's really not gonna eat that much. And I know it's really surprising to people, but in a survival situation, a large alligator can actually go an entire year without eating anything at all. I mean, zero food intake for an entire year, and they can survive that. And uh, no, he's not happy about that. You know, he doesn't want to do that. That's not normal, but they absolutely can. I've heard of even longer. Um, I don't have any, I don't have it verified, but I have heard of people saying up to two years without eating anything at all, which, man, that's mind blowing. I, I, again, I don't know that to be fact, um, but I have had people tell me that uh, from keeping animals in captivity. I don't know what kind of situation would warrant that sort of thing, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely a thing. And uh, it's not uncommon for them to not, to, to go off of feeding for several months at a time, you know, again, especially weather dependent, but also socially dependent. Um, I was working at a different park and uh, one dominant alligator, like a dominant male, uh, he got beat up by a new bigger male and then he actually became depressed. Like, I'm, this is my assessment of like, I'm not kidding. Like he got his butt kicked and then he didn't eat for six months. He, you would throw the food, right? Didn't care, wouldn't eat it. You literally hit him in the face with a piece of steak and he'd turn his head away. He actually became like, from my interpretation, depressed after losing his position as the dominant male and getting his butt kicked and he didn't want to eat anything for like six months. It's pretty, pretty crazy, you know? Um, and there's nothing wrong with him. Like he didn't really get injured. He, it was just a dominance battle and he lost and then he wasn't interested in eating for, you know, six months. He's so crazy, super wild. And so I guess I'm getting at is their diet, you know, can be influenced by social situations as well. It's not just purely environmental or, or anything like that, right? 
Now, a big point that I really like to try to make though, is that just because he doesn't have to eat doesn't mean that he's not hungry. And that's a really big one that a lot of people think like, oh, well, if he only has to eat once every couple of months, then that means that you're safe and he won't try to bite you right now and that's why. It's like, no, 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 no. Don't, don't conflate the two. Like not having to eat doesn't mean that you don't want to eat. Like he wants to eat every day. He is always hungry. And so he always wants food all the time, okay? Uh, in normal situations, he never turns down food. You know, again, he's only gonna turn down food if, uh, you know, again, inclement weather, it's too cold, you know, stuff like that. Um, or in that unusual, and the only time I've ever seen that, by the way, of that social situation. But otherwise, they always want food all the time. And on that note, this is why they're so prone to obesity in captivity. It's very common in captivity to see very overweight, obese alligators and crocodiles because, well, it's twofold. It's, it's the idea that for one, they're not gonna turn down the food. So people are like, oh look, he's still hungry, give him more food. Oh, he's still hungry, give him more food. Oh, he's hungry today, give him more food. And people are thinking like a mammal, you know, they're thinking like the human that they are or like how we think about dogs or cats because that's what we're normally around. And so they're like, oh, well, he's so big, he has to eat every day. And people aren't, you know, thinking with their, you know, logical scientific brain of like, no, this is a reptile. He doesn't have to eat every day and he should not eat every day. And if you do, you're creating an unhealthy alligator or crocodile that will have a shortened lifespan because of the stress on their heart and everything, just like we get, you know, from being overweight, all that kind of fun stuff, right? So we don't want to feed them every day. And uh, the lack of understanding of this in captive care does absolutely uh, lead to lessened lifespan in alligators and crocodiles. And also will create part of, I got a mosquito like right in my ear right now. Uh, can also influence that metabolic bone disease, right? You know, if you've heard me talk about that before, where they're features are altered. They have a much shorter, fatter head. Uh, their teeth stick out instead of down. I mean, there's a whole, whole different thing. I should do a whole uh, video just about metabolic bone disease, but um, that's caused by nutritional deficiencies. But I also, in my personal opinion, just from my work in captivity with these guys, uh, I think it also has to do with overfeeding them and they, they, their growth rate gets kind of messed up because they're given too much food uh, too often and it's not how they're supposed to be growing, you know. Um, that's just my two cents. I, I don't have any, any verification on that. It's just a hypothesis of mine. But, but either way though, uh, it is again common in captivity for people to really overfeed these animals. But again, I've said this one many times too, just because they are overfed doesn't make them safe either and there's plenty of videos of online of a big overweight gator definitely does not need to eat for the next year guy goes to feed it rips his hand right off swallows it right in front of his face you know so i'm always trying to explain that to people as well that you know feeding them does not make him bond with you or see you as his friend or provider like a dog would uh he will still bite you just the same even if he's very well fed what are you doing right now he's, look at it, he's pushing off of me right with his foot right here trying to turn around up against the wall here. Um, but but yeah, so I think that covers most of that about the feeding frequency and how often they eat and that kind of thing. And I'm sure people ask, we talked about this already, but just to kind of hit it again, since it's relevant in this topic, uh, what do they eat? In captivity, we mainly feed him a lot of raw meat, raw beef, raw chicken, raw pork, um, and then also whole rats whole prey rats. And so these are rats that are already dead. Uh, I don't show a lot of that in my videos just because we often do get flagged and I post my videos to many different platforms and some platforms will flag you for feeding them whole prey rats like that. So I mainly just show uh, feeding raw chicken because there's no blood involved, you know, usually with the raw chicken pieces and it just, it looks safe and clean for the moderators out there. So you don't get flagged on some of these more, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say it. Some of the platforms that flag you for literally everything that you do are super annoying. Um, but yeah, so that's why in most of my videos, you see me just giving them the raw chicken just because it just solves that problem. You know, even though we feed them all kinds of things, we just really stick to that just because of the moderation and, you know, things getting flagged and whatnot. But anyways, I think that covers most of it, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about it. Let me know what my next video topic should be on. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you in the next one.